like. She's just wanting power. So uh, do you want to hear uh, Rokana's response? He responded to AOC. Yeah, yeah. Fill me in. Um, not, uh, not the only thing I'll do. No, just- <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ro Kana. yes juicy um Ro. i want to roll with him so he said Ro Kana responded Ro Kana responded yes aoc we need an investigation into robin hood app's decision and who influenced that and this shows the need for a uh, financial transaction tax on hedge funds uh, on hedge fund shorting and SEC regulations on short selling practices. What, I want to ask you on that. What, do you think he's right on uh, the, the uh, what did he call it? Hold on a second. The financial transaction tax? Uh, Indeed, the financial transaction right tax. Why, now, a lot of people are going to say, oh my God, they're going against the rich, the, the, the job creators. Why should people support? Why, why, why is this a good idea? Okay, so first of all, these these um, hedge fund traders are trading like they just sniffed a whole bunch of cocaine, snorted a whole bunch they of cocaine. Did. They're trading. They probably have actually. Let's yeah, be real. You, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> they're trading. They're trading. You know, they're trading off their asses. You know, they're just every two seconds putting in a new trade, liquidating a trade, moving here, moving there, betting here, shorting here. I think Naeem, uh let's wait a little. Actually receive capital that they can use to grow their businesses, right? Could you, uh, could you repeat if they're that? Pulling out the capital, if they're pulling out the capital they just put in two seconds later, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I give you money and then I pull it out. I say, hey, Jason, hold up, hold up. You can't use that for your company. Let me take uh-huh. that back. Oh, I'm going to put it in now because it looks like your company is doing better two seconds later. No, that's just a whole bunch of uh, cocaine snorting nonsense. Uh, and so a tax, uh, maybe a 2.5% tax, a 3% tax, maybe a nice, a nice little Even pinch a two in cent the tax. butt. Huh? Even a two cent tax. Yeah, some sort of pinch in the butt every time they do this trade. Will remind them. Oh, I'm, don't 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 go haywire and start trading left and right, and uh, ruining the prospects of these companies. That's first of all. Second of all, the they were the ones who promoted democratization of the market by giving the retail investors uh, free trading platforms like Robinhood, right, or like Webull. Mm-hmm. They gave them these free trading platforms where they didn't have to trade for commission. What happened as a result? These big hedge funds are also probably paying less in commission to uh, commissioned traders for them. Um, And so as a result, uh, the way they used to pay commission on every trade, they can pay a tax on every trade now that will ensure financial protections uh, for them for their safety, of course, and for the safety of all other investors and all other stakeholders, companies, and people who consume from these companies that they're investing in and divesting in. And the employees. What they literally wanted to do with GameStop, they didn't care what results would happen to oh. GameStop. Or their they were employees. They were concerned with shorting GameStop and shoving it into the ground, which would hurt all the employees, hurt all the store managers, yep. hurt all the franchisees hurt the company as a whole, hurt the bottom line, hurt the CEO of GameStop, whomever he or she is. Everyone would have gotten hurt just so they can make another three or four billion dollars and pop right. open some champagne with their friends, right? Exactly. And, so and- no, there needs, to be, there needs to be a tax and there needs to be, if there's going to be a regulation on speculation, it has to be applied universally. It has to be applied to all trades, whether it's retail investors or institutional investors. And I would go further as to say with the retail investors, let me tell you a little secret. The reason Robinhood is free you know, when you trade and you buy stock and uh-huh. stuff like that on Robinhood, the reason the platform is free for the retail investor is they ha- they, you're not their customer. You're just their user. Their customer 
are those big hedge funds who buy the user yeah. data. They buy the user data to understand what stocks, which companies are the users of Robinhood buying so we can follow them or, or go against the grain for whatever reason. So their real customers are the hedge funds buying up the user data. The users use the Robinhood platform for free. So selling of data uh, and uh, to a larger extent for the big tech community as a whole, uh, uh, limiting targeted advertising, which is based on sold user data, has to be examined more deeply and has to be frankly regulated or fully banned if need be. But with all that being said, we really have to look at the institutional investors who made, who laid the groundwork for retail investors to enter. They're the ones who kept on saying under Bill Clinton and George W. Bush and Barack Obama, they kept on saying, we want everyone in the market. We want everyone in the market. Let's democratize the market. And that's why they, they promoted the idea of deregulation. That's why they promoted Glass-Steagall. They wanted to deregulate the market and their excuse was to democratize the market. Well, guess what? You did democratize the market. You gave us Robin Hood. And this is why you gave us Weeble. And this is why the market is so democratic now. And these yeah. retail investors had power. Well, this is the free market. Go against the hedge funds. And now these same hedge funds are crying foul when they were the ones who wanted to supposedly democratize the market. They just wanted the deregulation, but they used the excuse of democratizing the market. Well, this uh, is free all. market, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That was their whole excuse under Bill Clinton, right. during and, Bill Clinton's administration. And, and, and good luck, guys. This is the free market. You wanted the free market trading? This is free market trading. And by the way, um, I, I love the way Jam Jamal Palihapattaya put it on uh, CNBC. He just scorched them. Um, but, you know, and you think about it, this is the rich paying their fair share. This is the rich paying their fair share. And I'm glad you put it that way. And, uh, you know, and I won't even, I won't even, uh, and I don't mean to push back against what you're saying. I won't no, even no, go that far. I'll just say this is the consequence of gambling. That's all this is. Yeah. It's you go pretty to, simple. You, you go to a casino. You win and you lose. You go to a casino. You win and you lose. Right. You, let's, say, let's say you win a jackpot here in Vegas. Okay. It's $762 million. They say, okay. well, look, or $760 million. They say, look, we'll give you $500 million right now. The rest of it will take it for taxes. Or you can get your $700 million and you will pay it to you in increments for however many years. Well, most people are going to be smart and say, well, give me it right now. Give me the $500 million. I'd love $760 million, but it's okay. I'll make this money work for me. That's how the system works. Um, now, Ted Cruz responded to AOC. You want to hear it? Yes. So all he said was, so all of that was going on, right? After the, this is unacceptable, we should do this and that, we should do an investigation. And then Rokana uh, replied. And, and we should do an investigation. Right. And we should consider a financial transaction tax. We should but do all that. You're not going to get that with all these corporate tax in power. But hey, at least it's worth a try. But, or um, let's, or let's, let's regulate or ban speculation. That might be a quicker solution. Yeah, good luck on that one. <laughs> uh, but ban it for all, not like just right, not just for us. loopholes where yeah, where the, the yeah, not, not just for us. Do it, but a retail investor cannot. Mm -hmm. Well, as Sagar and Jetty said, he thinks it's all bad. I don't think it's all bad. I, it's toxic. But so Ted Cruz said, uh, "It's gambling. It's adrenaline rush." Yeah, ex exactly, yeah. exactly. And it, it's like if you were at a slot machine. You're gambling. You're spending all your money. So. Um, just know except, that except in. except you cannot just put your money in the vending and the not the vending machine the slot machine and then go oh i'm gonna pull you out now nope it's in there <laughs> you're screwed um yeah i know here, you, here know? you can pull out and when you pull out when you pull out uh you're 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 hurting the company see the thing that people don't remember stock markets not just numbers on a screen you're actually funding or defunding a company Realize that. Just keep that in mind every time you invest into a company. That's why people don't like to invest in big fossil fuel companies because they don't want to invest in dirty energy that will harm our environment. Right. And, you know, um, uh, you're, you're, you're not only helping the company, but you're helping the employees. You're helping, you're helping everybody. Yes. But, yes. Um, so Ted Cruz said, I had a thought, but it, I'll remember it when I listen to it. So Ted Cruz said, fully agree pointing down uh, at it. And then AOC said, 
oh my god i hate this i am happy to work with republicans on this issue where there's common ground but you almost had me murdered through uh three weeks ago so you can sit this one out happy to work with almost any uh, with almost any other gop that aren't um that aren't trying to get me uh, that aren't trying to get me killed in the meantime if you want to help you can resign now look um before I go on, this – oh, wait. Let me, let me do this. Uh, you haven't even apologized for, this, for the serious physical and mental harm uh, contributed to from Capitol Police and custodial workers to, uh, to your own fellow uh, members of Congress. Now um, – oh, here. She said, uh, in the meantime, you can get out of my timeline and stop clout chasing. Thanks. Happy to uh, happy to work with other GOP on this. Now, my response is twofold. Number one, this is a weak ass response. We were just talking about this before we came on. Um, the, great. This is just the whole. Um, oh my God! Remember what he did to me, and you're playing the victim. And we know what Ted Cruz did was wrong. We know what Trump did was wrong. But your response couldn't have been. Oh, it's funny that you want to work on this when your wife is literally a managing director for Goldman Sachs. You can sit this one out, Ted. I know you're pretending. Really? You couldn't make that reply? That would have been a more effective reply, and it would have yielded the same result. Right, because all she's worried about is about the retweet. The retweet. Because yeah, then it would no, have, yeah. well, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is a freaking liar. Like, Trump called him because he doesn't want to do this. He makes money from his wifey wife. Yeah, so she could have, AOC could have pointed that out, that his wife is a uh, managing director for Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, and uh, she would have gotten the same retweet power. It would have yielded the same result for her if it's all about, yep. all about the likes and the retweets. And, and just stop playing the victim. I get it, but stop playing the victim. Now, I also responded to this. <laughs> I love this reply. You haven't even apologized for the physical and mental harm you caused 15 million, uh, 15, million Ameri 15 million Americans who don't have health care by not uh, forcing the vote on Medicare for all and w uh, wasting your time on a failed impeachment trial. Agreed. Agreed. It's a failed impeachment trial. It's dead on arrival. It's a waste of taxpayer money, a waste of our legislators' time. I don't know if the legislators are going to spend that time doing anything better, but maybe they can pass a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill instead of focusing on um, an impeachment trial of a, of a now private citizen. Does President Trump need to be held accountable? I'd hope he'd be held accountable by the rule of law and by whatever legal mechanisms are in place. But now that he's a private citizen, he should be held accountable in a court of law uh, where all private citizens are held accountable and we shouldn't be wasting taxpayer money on a, uh, on an a p impeachment trial. That's an impeachment trial, uh, a waste money on an impeachment trial that is clearly, clearly, clearly partisan in nature and clearly dead on arrival. Not only is it dead on arrival, um, but Republicans already voted against it. Only five Republicans voted for it. So you had 55 votes. You needed uh, 12 more, and you didn't freaking get it. What the fuck is wrong with these Democrats? I've been talking about this on my podcast for so long now. I did uh, two impeachment episodes on my podcast, or clips, uh, impeachment clips. And I said, we're wasting tax dollars. How about you do this? And Kyle Kalinske talks about this on Secular Talk. You get the 14th Amendment, sections three and five, I think section C, whatever the freak the section is whatever the hell it is you get a simple majority in the house you get a simple majority in the senate which is exactly what they have comfortable yes. not too comfortable in the house but comfortable enough better than the better than in the senate and you pass that you don't waste our tax dollars it's done really quickly and guess what you then ban him from running for office again you can yes. add any gop members to that so now they can't run for re-election and then yes. what you do is you um you take away his travel budget, you take away his secret service detail, and you take away his annual salary for a president, yes. right? Yes. That's if Because that's their main goal. That's literally what they say, and yet Democrats didn't do that. And uh, Kyle pointed something out yesterday, which was, oh, my God. Uh, you could have done this, like, last week when people were still up in arms, and it would have 
it would have worked for you. But now this is a huge failure. And now he said, oh, maybe the Democrats, the Republicans voted against it because they want the Democrats to solve their own civil war. That's possible because that would be an ugly civil war and they could resolve it like that. But the Republicans could solve it themselves, but they don't want to go against the base. They want to then pin it on the Democrats in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. So, no. And, and, and let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that's important to know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the banning him from office using the 14th amendment. I was initially a huge supporter of that idea. Right. Mm -hmm. I was really like, that's what we should do. Right. But recently I've been thinking a lot. I was like, what precedent does it set if we just start banning people from running for office? What we should do We've is done let it. him be held accountable in a court of law, and that will just automatically ban him from running for office if there are, in fact, criminal charges found against him. Yeah, but even if there's a criminal charge, he's not going to jail. He might pay yeah, a Yeah, but it's enough for him to there. have a criminal charge, a felony, for him not to be able to run for office. You see what I mean? Might, we would have accomplished right. the same goal without there being or that political be a precedent set. Without or, there being that political precedent set. Or it might just be a lawsuit. That's it. And by the way, the, it, it, might not, it might just be a lawsuit. And who knows... You never know who the heck's going to come after him, right? Yeah. Now, so, I, support, I support the 14th Amendment, Section 3, more so than I support uh, impeachment. impeachment. Yeah, so if I, was, if I had to choose between said. the two, I would choose 14th Amendment for sure. Without exactly. A doubt. And look, we've and already I do used believe, it. Uh, let, let's both put a disclaimer out here. I don't know if I can speak for you, but I can definitely speak for myself. What happened on January 6th was unacceptable, period, end of story. No one's defending the president's actions by using uh, inflammatory language. But I, I don't know that wasting another month and a whole bunch of taxpayer money on an impeachment is the route, is the way to go. And I love how they can do an impeachment trial, but they can't pass $2,000. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. No, exactly. And oh, it just boy. seems so partisan. You know, like I know that uh, Chief Justice John Roberts refused to preside over this impeachment trial because of the fact that he is that, Former former President Trump is now a private citizen, so um, now it's going to be Vermont Senator Democrat Patrick Leahy who will preside over the trial because he uh, over the trial because he's uh, uh, President pro tempore. I don't know. I'm not good with Latin of the Senate. Yeah. So uh, it looks even more partisan that the person presiding exactly. over the trial is a Democrat. Well, it was part of the last time. It was last time because of John Roberts being a Republican. So either way, so AOC. Doing but that's the thing: the justice, the way the justice system is set up, a Supreme Court Chief Justice is the one who sits on yes, exactly. these cases. So either way, it would. It, Rehnquist was a Republican, I think, right? And during the Clinton era, Justice Rehnquist. Yeah, I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I think yeah, don't so. quote me on that either. But you know, yeah. he did a great job. But there you go. AOC tweeting about the Robin Hood scandal and them closing. She's doing a good and, job, doing a good yep. job. And then and Ted Rokana, Cruz shows up in her replies. <laughs> yeah, Ted, because he wants to seem relevant. Oh, this is hot. <laughs> and, then she, and then she sort of kind of bombs it, you know? No disrespect, but she was really doing a good, no, disrespect good job. All the way. Rokana was doing a great job. Yeah, and then she's exactly. like... Oh, Instead of me, going after me. him for his ties to the financial industry and calling his bluff the right way. Yeah, oh, poor me. <laughs> no, she should have just called his bluff. Yo, man, cut out the bullshit. We know cut your wife bullshit, is with Goldman, Sachs, Goldman Sachs. Exactly. Yeah. And Ted Cruz, you take money from these people. Don't try in front with me. Like this, that would have gotten call a lot bluff. of... Call yeah, and that yeah, would shut him up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, it did shut him up either way. But, you know... Um, Playing this whole victim card, annoying as hell. We get it, AOC, but right now that's not what we're focused on. So, Naeem, I know you said um, until about five o'clock my time. Um, is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. What time are you at now? Uh, we're we're at uh, four forty something. Let me check here. We are four forty six or seven forty six your time. So I, wow, we've been having a great deal of fun. Yeah, I wanted I to get in. I, I wanted to get into uh, Biden's uh, haphazard uh, extension of the New Start Treaty with Russia. But <laughs> oh man, I know. And I wanted to get into Andrew Yang. I wanted to get into China. But you know what? Uh, we will we will talk off air when you're available next. 
I, I had a great conversation with you. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I want to, you know, man, this was so great. We just uh, an incredible, just, man, this was so fluid. I loved it. Lots of great, uh, th- uh, lots of great content. This, this boy, this man has a boatload of knowledge that I, I don't, uh, as he would say, a dick load of knowledge. Uh, that's, <laughs> That's literally a what massive you dick load of knowledge. A massive right. dick load of knowledge. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Let me take a drink to that. Hold on a second. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but real talk. There's so much more we have to cover. I mean, oh um, gosh, I'll have to be back. I'll have to be back on yeah. your show for sure. Yeah, and, and let's bring you back really soon because I, I want to continue this conversation because... Let's see, maybe tonight. I have, I have a virtual appointment at mm-hmm. 8 p.m. Right. Let me see what time that finishes. Maybe maybe I come back on. What are you looking at for the rest of the evening? Uh, I'm free. You're but, free? All right, well, I'll we'll, be in contact. Yeah, we'll discuss it uh, once we stop yeah. this. But uh, Oh, Naeem, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. Naima, well, Hawa, it was... Man, I, I, think, I don't know what was my favorite. I, man, I love the whole conversation. I, I was excited. I, you know what? Another time we, we need to discuss more of Biden's policies and, and health care and all of that. And he, we're, we're just going to need to discuss a lot more. Um, I definitely want to talk more about a whole bunch of other things, Andrew Yang especially. I did a video on him, but we covered quite a lot of ground. And um, by the way, guys, this is not rehearsed. Me and I am we <laughs> probably end up talking about this after. <laughs> so, um, but Naeem, uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Where can people find you so that they can contact you and have uh, discourse as you want to? Uh, yeah, want. for sure. I'd love to share discourse. Um, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I do welcome email. Uh, you could send me an email at uh, N-M-A-B-U-E-L-H-A-W-A at gmail.com. Once again, that's N-M as in New Mexico, A B U. E L H A W A at gmail.com. I'll say one last thing real quick. As we sure, know, yeah. this whole GameStop story is still unfolding. We're going to see how this all turns out. Yeah, one last um, thing on that. Did you, you yeah. hear about Janet, Janet Yellen, our new tre- Treasury Secretary? I know I said we we're going to go, but Jan- Janet Yellen's taking, took $800 and um, it's. Oh, $800,000. Oh, yeah, $800,000. Oh, yeah, $800,000. $800, <laughs> Yeah, eight hundred thousand dollars. The press secretary Jen Psaki said she's qualified because she deserves that money. No, I just wanted to mention that before we go. And um, yeah, and eight hundred thousand dollars is such a small amount, probably to Janet Yellen's net worth. Oh yeah, it's like, but I mean that was really just for a to, speaking yeah. fee. That was one speaking fee. Yeah, I mean if I made eight hundred thousand dollars off speaking, shoot, I'll be out of here. I'll be in the Caribbean right now. Um, oh my god, <laughs> I'll be speaking all day till I lose my voice. Um, yeah, me, me too. Me too. Uh, that would be so easy. But, <laughs> but, but I want to say, I wanna say uh, this is just a theory. I don't have any evidence to back this up. But uh, Jason, you and your viewers should look into whether, whether part of what made this GameStop stock bubble happen was more than just retail investors. I really do think since big hedge funds and other uh, investment institutional uh, investment uh, firms have um, options where they do algorithm-based trading. Um, I do think that some of what bumped the stock price up for GameStop, uh, the stock bubble, um, has to do with, uh, pardon, has to do with the um, algorithm-based trading that does go on in the stock market on a regular basis as well. Uh, I will say as of the market close, Uh, On Friday, January 29th, 2021, GameStop stock stands at uh, the market close here in the United States. It stands at $325 per share from my understanding. So it went back up. It dropped yesterday, but it definitely went back up over 67% today. It dropped by like 54, 55% yesterday. So now it is even higher, I think, than it was at its peak on Wednesday. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I don't, I don't so, uh, even with the limited buying that Robin hood, uh, instituted today, uh, uh, the stock, uh, price, the stock per share for GameStop stock did in fact still go up. So people are still buying 
Well, that's momentum is still power. there for the GameStop stock. Yeah, momentum is still there, whether it's yeah. retail investors, algorithm based investing, or, or other shows. mechanisms. There are people, or both, there yeah. are people who are still momentum buying into GameStop. So uh, the institutional investors crying foul didn't make much of a difference. The hedge fund billionaires crying foul didn't make much of a difference. If anything, it pushed people to push that stock price up even higher as of market close Friday, January 29th, 2021. So it's pretty yeah. cool to see how that happened. Yeah, really crazy shit. <laughs> Just crazy stuff going on here. So, oh man, it was awesome. <laughs> wow. And you can also find Naeem on uh, No Nonsense whenever they start posting, hopefully in the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully soon, yes. Hopefully soon. Uh, yes. Oscar Montiel's from No Nonsense as well. You can find him there. And um, you can find me at FluffyJA97 on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me on the podcast platforms, uh, Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, uh, Breaker Google, Pocket Casts, uh, Radio Public, Spotify. I think I said I already – Pandora. It, everywhere you get your podcast, you can find me. Uh, it is called Get the Memo on the uh, Anchor and everywhere else on the, on the platforms. That'll be in the description. Uh, Naeem, once again, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for having me. It's really appreciated. I have to come on yeah, soon, soon, as soon, soon as possible. As soon we as can, possible, yeah, we man. We talk about Biden foreign policy and how weird it looks. It really <sighs> is bizarre the way he's doing things. Yeah, anyway. get into, delve into <laughs> China and get some Panda Express while we're eating it. And it's our responsibility to hold our elected leaders accountable. So we yep. are hopefully doing the, uh, the uh, uh, integral work, the, uh, the necessary work of, um, of, of holding our elected, our elected officials accountable because we voted them in to represent us, the people, we the people. So, Unfortunately, they uh, don't. We have but... to always continue this discourse, this dialogue, yep. no matter whether the person in the White House is a Republican, Democrat, Independent, or uh, male, female, uh, uh, white, Caucasian, African American, Latino American, Arab American, or so on. So, um, exactly. it, it, it's uh, our responsibility. Like We're just doing that. Exactly. I like your principles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this clip and this episode on the podcast. Uh, well, well, this this last episode for the week. Uh, yeah, this, for sure. You know, for for well, well, this this is not the last episode for the week, but just uh, for now, this is the final end of the clip. And uh, more to come. <laughs> yep, more to come, ladies and gentlemen. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and on the podcast platforms, like and uh, share those and follow those as well. Thank you, Jason. And thank you to the viewers as well. Yeah, no problem, dude. All right.